All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, that video, Hand in Hand, that was the theme song for the Summer Olympics in Seoul, Korea in 1988. Uh, today we're celebrating uh, two Unification's Holy Days. Um, and the second one was founded actually in 1998, just the day after the ending of the Seoul Olympics uh, uh, events. Uh, actually, there's been a, a couple of holidays this uh, last, last few days. Um, uh, on what Thursday night, we had Halloween, or as I like to call it, All Hallows' Eve, which is the original name of it. Uh, I heard an interesting story about uh, Halloween in, in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, they actually, going back to like the 1930s, they stopped all trick-or-treating on Halloween. No trick-or-treating on Halloween. They could have Halloween parties, costume parties, whatever, that's fine. But no door-to-door trick-or-treating. The day before, on October 30th, they could join in what's called Beggar's Night. And so, young kids, they could go door-to-door, knock on doors, but instead of saying trick-or-treat, they had to sing a song or recite a poem, or, as what's happened more often now, they had to tell a funny joke, right? And then they would get their candy, and then they would get their treat. So I thought that was a pretty, pretty interesting take on, on the whole trick-or-treat uh, activities. Actually, uh, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, comes from the Christian Catholic tradition. And uh, uh, while the Thursday night was All Hallows' Eve, the evening, the next day was All Hallows' Day, All Saints' Day. And then the following day, the November 2nd, is All Souls' Day. So in, in Mexican tradition, it's the Day of the Dead. So all of this is celebrating and honoring those saints that have gone to the spiritual world and our ancestors that have gone to the spirit world. It's really a rich and beautiful uh, tradition. Uh, in the, from India... The tradition of uh, Diwali, the festival of lights. It's actually, it shows up in uh, a lot of the um, uh, religions that started in uh, India. So the Hindus celebrate it, uh, Sikhs uh, celebrate it, Jains celebrate it, and others, and, and even non religious people uh, celebrate the festival of lights. And um, the symbol, the overall significance of uh, Diwali is that it's the victory of the light over the darkness. So the lighting of lights and lots of lamps and candles around the house. Um, Also the victory of knowledge and wisdom over ignorance and good over evil. And actually in in, uh, India lots of fireworks. It's definitely the day for more than the 4th of July in America. The fireworks, fireworks, fireworks and giving of gifts and also sharing of treats and sweets uh, with each other. Actually, our neighbors across the street are from Fiji. If, if lots of India's, uh, Indians from uh, Fiji, in Fiji. And they had all kinds of lights set up outside in the, in the front of their house. It was really nice. Of course, it was Halloween too, so it was a good coincidence. But all, there's all these uh, traditions. And kind of nice to have these traditions in the autumn of the year, you know, when it's starting to turn more dark, right? Now our daylight savings time is going to get darker earlier tonight, uh, at least according to time, we'll notice it. In our Unification's tradition, we have two holy days that we celebrate. On Friday was True Children's Day, and on today is the anniversary of the Foundation Day for the Unified Nation of the World. So I want to talk about those, those two today and, and focus on them. Um, actually, this, um, this weekend I was reading a book of, um, from, about uh, Viktor Frankl. And if uh, you, you don't know him, I encourage you to, 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 to check him out. His, his book that he's most famous for is called Man's Search for Meaning. And he's a, um, a survivor of many um, uh, of the death camps uh, uh, during World War II uh, by the Nazis. And uh, all of his families were murdered. And, and so out of that, though he was a uh, psychoanalyst, but he used it 
and to apply his theory about meaning in life. And there's three points that he made about where do we find meaning in our lives. And, of course, one is we find it through loving people and being loved by people. So that connectedness, that relationships of love, that's where we find love, that's where we find happiness and fulfillment. And the second is when we do things that make a difference in the world, when we're working and do, taking actions that make a positive impact in the world around us. And the third one is whenever we face challenges in our life and we overcome them, that brings a sense of meaning and value and happiness in our lives. So those three things. Actually, since we was thinking about the Olympics in 1988, Olympic athletes, they definitely have to overcome all three of those, right? I mean, there's love in the teamwork and, and, and working together and, and representing the country. Of course, it's very meaningful. They're striving to, to represent the nation, right? So they really had to overcome difficulties and work hard. And that sense of connectedness and community is, uh, you know, being represented, certainly meaningful and significant. So uh, let me talk first about the Foundation Day for the Unified Nation of Heaven and Earth. Um, like that song said, you know, hand in hand, you know, all across the land, breaking down the barriers uh, between peoples. That's something that we all long for. It's definitely, uh, uh, you know, the kind of optimistic worldview. But if you think about what was happening in 1988, now I know some of you weren't even born then, <laughs> some of the younger people, but the world was a scary place in 1988. Uh, and, and, you know, if we look at some of, the, some of the things that were going on, so in 1980, the United States had boycotted the Olympics because they were being held in Moscow, and, and the Soviet Union had just invaded Afghanistan. And so four years later, for the next Olympics, the Soviet Union boycotted the Olympics that happened in the United States, in Los Angeles. So... You know, there's kind of a lot of stress. So 1988, what's going to happen? You know, who's going to show up in, in Seoul, Korea? For our movement in 1985, uh, Father Moon was released from Danbury Prison. You know, this was a very difficult and challenging time for our, our movement. When the, the United States government came against our movement, and particularly um, our founder. But the, during that time, 1986, we went out... And we collected signatures, one million signatures, all around the country, basically affirming God, affirming freedom, and affirming the danger of atheistic communism. I remember going to the subways in, in, in Manhattan, New York City, <laughs> standing in the subway with my clipboard. Hey, when you sign, when you sign, when you sign. We collected a million signatures, that kind of spiritual activity and condition. From 1985 to 1987, we brought 7,000 Christians from all different denominations um, to Korea to study the unification teachings, the revelations that Father Moon had, had received from Jesus about this time and his mission and calling. Then in 1988, we had the Seoul Olympics, right? 159 countries, both the Soviet Union and the United States showed up, right? And uh, Father Moon asked all of the missionaries from around the world to come to Seoul to be there for the Olympics. And so the missionaries f for that country would go and support and bring gifts and whatever to the athletes from their country to really encourage them and lift them up. Interesting thing to understand is that this 1988 Olympics, it was the last Olympics that the Soviet Union ever participated in. It was also the last Olympics that East Germany participated in. Because just a few years later, there was no longer an East Germany. There was no longer a Soviet Union. So in effect, that was the last Olympics during that Cold War time period. The proclamation that uh, Father Mother Moon, we, we call them our true parents, true parents made 
was just the, after the, the closing ceremony of the Olympics was October 2nd. And October 3rd was this declaration of the Foundation Day for the unified nation of the world. Later changed to be not just the world, but heaven and earth. And then, just 30 days later, October 30th, we had a huge blessing ceremony of marriage. Blessing of marriage. 6,500 couples. Many of them were couples, Japanese and Korean couples. And of course, if, if anyone knows the history of conflict between Japan and Korea, that was very challenging. It was like former enemy nations coming together in this amazing event. And actually, you'll, you'll see it in the, in the video later on during the announcements. Such an amazing time. So let me read. This is uh, from um, uh, True Parents' uh, prayer in the, the proclamation of this Foundation Day. Beloved Heavenly Father, the flow of history has been one of intense grief. And the history of your providence has been one of despair. Because you are love, Father, you have persevered to this day to establish the standard of the original ideal of creation through the history of recreation, not casting us away. Love is the only power which can open the door to the nation of the unified world. So this is the proclamation. Love, God's love, is the only thing that can bring healing and unite the world. So if we look at the things that happen after that foundation of the unified nation of heaven and earth declaration in 1988, well, the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, and Germany was united again. In 1990, Father Mother Moon, our true parents, met with Mikhail Gorbachev, you know, the leading, uh, leader of the communist nation of the world, <laughs> meeting some of the most fervent anti-communists, right? And they met, and, and that opened up the way for us to go into the Soviet Union to teach the unification principle to university students and professors. Communism ended in the Soviet Union in 1991. Amazing. You know, some of us were, even, were there during the time of the coup. It was just at the end of some of our uh, the workshops and seminars. And then Father Mother Moon met with... Kim Il-sung, the dictator of North Korea, who was also one of the big enemies, but they showed the example of loving the enemies and broke through, were able to actually meet with Kim Il-sung, who'd even ordered in the past, you know, the, the, the assassination of Father and Mother Moon. In 1992, the marriage blessing ceremony was opened up to all people, doesn't matter what denomination or what religion they are, they can participate in this rededication of marriage ceremony, connecting the whole world to create one human family under God as our Heavenly Parent. Since then, we had pilgrimages to the Middle East, trying to bring together Jewish and Muslim and Christian and even the other religions, Druze and different religions in the, in the community. The Universal Peace Federation was established and the work of the Women's Federation for World Peace and the Family Federation for World Peace. Father Moon passed away to the spiritual world in 2012. In 2013, and we'd, he'd been speaking about it and, and laying the foundation, you know, the preparation for it. In 2013 was the foundation day of what we call Chonal Guk which is the heavenly, a Korean term for the kingdom of heaven on earth. And since that day, so many things have happened. Uh, uh, Mother Moon started up the Sung Hak Peace Prize in 2014, recognizing and acknowledging and awarding people who are doing amazing things in the world to create a better world. Um, the International Summit Council uh, conferences, inter people from all over the world, national leaders, coming, and also the First Ladies Association for Peace, coming together to discuss how can we really bring healing and peace in the world. 
the Universal Peace Federation established a number of different associations that focus on specific areas. So we have parliamentarians for peace, you know, getting the politicians involved. We have the Interfaith Association for Peace and Development. This is bringing people of all different religions together. The media, academics, economics, arts, the Peace Road Project, which was a vision that the True Parents first talked about in 1981, of a highway that would connect the world together. Even, even uh, part of that uh, Peace Road Project is this uh, tunnel between Japan and Korea. And even the conversations about a, a, a tunnel and bridge connecting Russia and America through the Bering Strait up in Alaska. All these activities. Mother Moon did a world tour, speaking tour, and a lot of it spent in, in Africa and conducting these incredibly huge blessing and rededication of marriage ceremonies. And Women's Federation for World Peace continued to expand even the establishment of the World Christian Leadership Conference, bringing Christian leaders from all over the world. Amazing things happening. Um, and then we had COVID. <laughs> COVID, but COVID didn't slow us down. Uh, we started doing worldwide online rallies of hope. where We brought leaders and representatives from all over the world, came to Korea, but then the, it was broadcast to the entire world. And there were a number of, of these rallies of hope events that happening. And then next year, 2025, we're going to be celebrating the opening of the Chunwangun in Korea. This is for unification. This is like our holy temple uh, this, that all uh, this work is being leading up to. And the center of the uh, uh, Chunoguk um, government and leadership. We live in amazing times. <laughs> we live in really, you know, the things that are happening. At the same time, just like in 1988, it was pretty discouraging. You know, there was a, lot, it was a scary time to be alive. You know, we never knew if the Cold War was going to become a hot war. But, and even now, you know, all the worry and upset over the elections that are happening and the conflicts that we have in Ukraine and the Middle East and lots of uh, war and fighting in Africa. So many things going on, but at the same time, so much potential for bringing healing and creating that true unified world of peace. Now the thing is, amazing times needs amazing people. And I'm so glad I've got a room full of amazing people right here, right? <laughs> We have the, the Peace Starts With Me campaign, right? Because it starts with me. So this leads us into talking about the second holy day that we're celebrating, and that's True Children's Day. It's not just celebrating, oh, having children. It's actually celebrating the fact that we are children of God, our Heavenly Parents. We are God's children. So this was a victory of the restoring that proper position of children, and where God could finally claim us again as his true sons and daughters. So let me read some of uh, uh, True Parents' words. God created human beings as his children. What then is the connection that binds each of you to God? It is the love and heart between parent and child. Yet, human beings having lived for thousands of years under the influence of the fallen realm, are still slaves in our hearts to false parents, false love, and false lineage. If we are to escape from this yoke, we must constantly live lives of true love, practicing forgiveness and always giving to others. Another quote from True Parents. We may have a lot of confusing problems, but there is only one fundamental problem in our hearts. It is the fact that we have lost our parents. Mankind's loss of parents and Heavenly Father's loss of his children has to be recovered. It is our foremost priority to reestablish that lost relationship to regain the lost happiness, 
to repossess the lost joy. That is the declaration of True Parent, True Children's Day that we're celebrating today. Yeah, True Children, amen? Okay, I'm grateful to have amazing, true sons and daughters of God here. So just let me conclude with just reminding us, you know, our challenge is how do we live as true sons and daughters of God? You know, I mean, even though we receive that and God loves us, we need to also do our part to fulfill, to be those filial faithful sons and daughters of, of God, to build that unified world, nation of the world, uniting heaven and earth. It needs citizens of the heavenly kingdom, king, uh, heavenly kingdom, citizens who know we are God's sons and daughters. We are brothers and sisters. We are one human family. So, five points. Said them before. First thing, we've got to spend time with God. Our heavenly parent. You've got to, you know, I encourage you. Set some kind of pattern, some routine in your life where you pray, but also that you sit with God. That you talk with God, you be with God. Give God your full attention. Now we have times when we're praying fervently and you know, outlined and you know, energized prayers. And then we have prayers when we have a prayer list and you know, we're praying all for all these people that we care about in our life. But also times where we're praying, where we're just sitting, meditating, thanking God and living in God's presence and feeling God's love. We've got to spend time with our Heavenly Parent to be true sons and daughters, right? Yeah, what is the parent like the most? To hang out with their loving children, right? So, that's what God wants too. Secondly, in our daily life, let's study God's Word. Just make a habit of bringing, reading Scripture every day. You know, the world is filling us with junk all the time. We need to fill our minds continually with God's truth God's Word. This is why we have the tradition of Hundake, regular daily study and and, and sharing together. Thirdly, to be true sons and daughters of God, we need to serve. We need to love our neighbor, right? We need to take actions that make a difference in the world. And on that foundation, we need to share the blessings that we have. Each one of us has unique gifts and talents. God's given us amazing gifts and talents. Now, he didn't give us everything. So there's some things that we're good at and some things that we're not good at. But fortunately, we have brothers and sisters that can fill the gap because we're a community. And by sharing our blessings, sharing especially the experience that we have with with God as our heavenly parent, knowing uh, true parents, the blessing of marriage, the rededication ceremony, the chance to participate in bringing about transformation and healing in this world. Well, we've got lots that we have to share. So let's do it. Let's be sons and daughters that can comfort our Heavenly Parent and encourage God, our Heavenly Parent. So let me uh, conclude with this from our true parents' words. God feels delight when He sees us filled with joy. And we human beings are happy when we experience God rejoicing with us over our joy. And then, true, the true celebration of Children's Day is to rededicate ourselves to this common purpose and age-old goal. Beyond race and creed, we want to bring together as many children as possible who can accept true parents. God's dream is one human family. Amen? Amen. Okay. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, we thank you so much for your perseverance throughout all of the ups and downs of history. And today as we're celebrating and remembering these uh, great breakthroughs, True Children's Day, when you could finally claim us as your true children. And we pray that we can truly fulfill and bring joy to you with the choices we make in our life, with the actions that we take in our life, and the difference we make in the world around us. 
And Heavenly Parent, we're also celebrating today that Foundation Day of the Unified Nation of Heaven and Earth. The vision that you have of one human family with you at the center. Heavenly Parent, thank you so much for the chance we have to live in these amazing times. We pray that you'll continue to guide us, Heavenly Parent. We know many times we, we stumble, many times we're confused. But we want to offer all that up to you, Heavenly Parent, and determine that no matter how many times we fall down, no matter how many fears we have to face, no matter how many challenges we have, that we can be victorious because you are always with us. Thank you so much for your love. Heavenly Parent, we thank you. Join together as your sons and daughters, as blessed central families, and we offer up ourselves to you again. Amen and adieu. Adieu.